Hi, I'm Sarah Swan and I do videos to help people with their mental health. Today's video is about secure attachment. So what is secure attachment? And this is a very in-depth video. So I did another video, I did another two videos actually. Um, one of them talks about attachment theory and it goes over like a brief overview of all the attachment um, different styles. And then another one goes a little bit more into depth. This video is going into really a lot more depth. So my goal with my videos that I'm creating for you is that I do videos that start off a little shallow and then go more into depth. Because my goal is to be able to teach you kind of like going, going really into depth. Because I'm the type of person I love going deep. And so if you like going deep and you want to learn about the topic and know even more because my, my channel is about getting to know yourself as a person and getting to know other people as well. Um, and my goal is to be able to teach you that. So anyway, um, today's video is about secure attachment. So what is secure attachment and how does that differ from the insecure attachments? Um, so basically secure attachment is a type of attachment style and unlike insecure, they are a little bit, they're more confident and they have a lot of qualities um, that um, it's essentially, a lot of studies say that there's like 50% people um, that are secure attachment and the rest aren't. Some of the studies are more like 60%. Um, it depends on the study that you're looking at, but um, secure attachment. So basically if you're secure attachment, you most likely have high confidence. You have high self-esteem you have high respect for yourself and for others. You are able to self-love, self-care. You're able to take care of others as well. And um, you're, you're, you're basically, you have a high self-worth. Now, you also are probably less triggered in relationships and you're less reactive. So you, as, as your unconscious brain kind of like goes through all of your stuff, you have less things that bother you in your daily environment. And if you do have a trigger, you kind of know how to deal with it. You have the skills to cope with it. Um, another thing is you're interdependent. So this means you're able to be dependent on another person, but you're also able to be independent as well. So you, you know how to get your needs met by another person, but you also know how to get your needs met by yourself. So you're able to be intradependent you are also able to have emotional intimacy. This means that you can be vulnerable with others, but at the same time, you can have boundaries. Um, you can take things slowly. You know how to, um, you know that trust takes time to build when you're, you're creating a new relationship. You don't go too fast. Um, and you know that building a solid, solid foundation in a relationship will help the the relationship not fall down later on and it'll help it be more stable this brings to being emotionally aware so you also are emotionally aware you're you're this means that you are aware of your own emotions you're able to pay attention to your emotions you know exactly how you feel but at the same time you also know how the other person feels and you're able to able to kind of see them you're you're able to be supportive of them and supportive of yourself you also have a lot of self-respect for yourself and others, and you know yourself at a very deep level, which means you are able to be authentic to yourself, and you show up as your authentic self in a relationship rather than trying to fit in and being something that you're not, or giving up your self-identity, or not even knowing your self-identity. So you know who you are. Like with me, I'm coming from an insecure attachment to a secure attachment. And so lately I am starting to know more of who I am and what I want to do. Um, so if you are more secure, you, you kind of know where you want to go in life. You, you know what interests you. Like for me, it's rollerblading. It's doing these videos and I want to become a coach eventually. It's, um, and, and it's also like not judging yourself too. Like for example, if you're learning something new, you know that you're just learning something new. And you're not going to over criticize yourself and say, oh, I'm not good enough or I can't do this um, or I'm horrible. And, and it's like this idea of just this one moment being the worst case scenario, this black and white thinking. But if you're more secure, 
then you know that, oh, this is just one moment. And, and overall in the whole future, the whole gist of things, you know that you could get to where you want to go. And so you don't overjudge yourself. Um, that's another thing. So you don't overjudge yourself. Um, what creates really high self-esteem is that you are your best friend to yourself. You don't judge yourself. You don't criticize yourself. You don't put yourself down. You are able to give yourself positive words. You are able to give yourself self-compassion. Like if you make a mistake or you do something, you're able to look at it as a more objective kind of point of view to say, hey, I did this. This is what I did. This is what the other person did. This is what I could do better. And not like be like, oh, I'm the most horrible person in the world. I'm not good enough because of this. Um, you're not giving those extra meanings of I'm not good enough or I'm unloved or whatever meaning you're giving. You're, you're, being, you're able to be objective with that. Um, another thing is you're, you're trusting. So you know yourself so well, you trust the process. Um, so let's see. Um, and then to go along with all that is you're able to be present. So again, if you are insecure, a lot of times your unconscious mind has these like kind of programs or these emotions kind of tabbed into your mind. And so when you have a relationship or a daily life experience, a lot of times your, your, your brain doesn't know the difference. Your body doesn't know the difference of whether you're in the present or the past. And so if there's something in the present day that kind of reminds you of the past, you might be reacting. You might, um, you might be, let me give you an example, like, um, let's say a friend says something to you and how they say it kind of makes you feel, oh, this person doesn't want you to, like, this person doesn't like me or I'm being excluded. And so maybe you have a memory from a kid where you were excluded or something happened where they turned against you. And so you might be reactive in that situation thinking that the other person is going to do the same thing. And so if you are more secure, you're more likely to know the difference between whether that friend is actually doing the same thing or whether it's a new experience. And so you're able to be more present. You're able to focus more on the other person. That's another thing. So rather than be very subjective or very egocentric, um, where you're only focusing on your kind of needs and your yourself, you're able to look at the other person and be like, oh, objectively, this is what they're going through. This is what I'm going through. And I know the difference between whether this is me and this is them. And so you can own your own stuff, but you also know that that person is also, you know, that's their stuff. And so you're able to be more objective and that also allows you to be more present as well. Um, and so again, the authenticity, um, you're communicating your needs. So if you are secure attachment, you're able to communicate your needs a lot more effectively. You know what language to use. You, you know, um, that the whole criticizing, blaming, um, being super angry at the other person is probably going to cause the other person to shut down and you won't be able to communicate your needs. You also know what your needs are so you can communicate them. And you'll do something like I statements, like when this happens, I feel this way. Um, and you also own your own stuff. Again, you, you know that, you know, okay, maybe I'm triggered from the past. You know, maybe this person's doing something that kind of makes me feel a certain way. Like I feel abandoned or something. Cause especially I'm coming from disorganized. So I have both anxious and avoidant. And so there's been times where something will happen and I'll feel like abandoned, you know, like if someone doesn't text me back, like within a certain time period, I'll feel abandoned, but not anymore. I'm starting to actually get that secure, but, um, <laughs> sorry. So, but yeah, so a lot of times like you'll be able to know the difference and you're able to communicate those needs to your partner and be like, oh, when this happens, I feel this way. Um, this is my stuff and I don't expect you to, to own my stuff, I will own it. But you know, just to let you know, um, you're able to communicate that. And so finally, I want to do a quote. Um, it's something that I've written. I have a document, um, maybe I can somehow include it. I'm not sure how to attach, 
But I have this like really great infographic and I might be able to include it somehow. But anyway, um, the quote basically would be from someone who's secure. I can get close to others while maintaining my independence. I know that it takes time to build relationships and I build trust with others. I am emotionally available and, and can be vulnerable and open with others, yet I am also knowing my own boundaries. In a relationship, we are able to show each other our love, effectively communicate with each other, and be fully present with each other. We know relationships take work, but wanting to be in one should be easy. And I added that last part because a lot of times, um, if you're more secure, you know that there's more people out there. You know that if you meet someone and they don't necessarily meet your needs, then you're like, okay, I can go on to someone else. I can find someone who's a better match. And you know that there's more people. And so there's been many cases where I've seen people will be attracted to someone that's somehow unavailable or opposite maybe, right? And so like I've seen stuff where, and I've been there, <laughs> I've been there, where I've been attracted to someone who was unavailable. And, and I kept on trying to, you know, sort of change that other partner or try to fix them. And they know that it's not their job to fix the other person. They can give them that baton. They can say, hey, maybe try this. But if that other person's not interested, they know that they can't fix them. They know that they can work on themselves. They can, they can change how they react. They can change how they're going to present themselves, right? Um, and so let's say someone is just, it's so hard to try to get into a relationship with this person. Well, they know, okay, well, they don't want a relationship. I do. And they own their needs. And they say, well, this person's a great person. I still would love to be with them, but they don't want a relationship doesn't fulfill my needs. So therefore I'll go to someone who will. And so they know that they can get someone who will want a relationship, who will want to commit, who, who, who they can eventually learn how to trust because trust takes time to build. Um, relationships take time to build. They know this. And so they also know that relationships can be work because to stay in one, you have to stay. So that's why I included the last um, statement. But anyway, I hope you liked this video. This is about secure attachment. I will be doing um, more in-depth videos about the other forms of attachment. And um, thank you for watching. And um, if you like, please like it. If you, um, and subscribe. And if you really, really like it, share it with a friend. So anyway, my goal is to have a business to help people um, learn their relationship to themselves and relationship to others using the creative arts. And um, this is something that I personally have been working on myself for the last three plus years. Um, I've read so much like information, taken it all in, and and um, I want you to be able to build a healthy relationship with yourself and others, and also to deepen that relationship, to become more intimate with yourself and others, because I feel as you learn self-love, self-worth, and all these like skills that you can learn for yourself, you also are able to learn it with others. Um, as you become more empathetic, more compassionate towards yourself, you become more compassionate, empathetic with others. And so that's why it's reciprocal. Um, yeah, so anyway, thank you and I hope you enjoyed.